<laughs> Thanks, Joe. No problem. All right. Have a good day. Well, I'll stick around for check-in. Okay. Um, I don't see that I'm host yet. Oh, change host. Now you are. Oh, now yes. it says I am. Okay. okay. Yes. Must be a little delay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome everybody who's going into the room. It is a cold, brisk, sunny morning here in Pennsylvania. And as soon as I give a few people the chance to come on in, we will get started. Anybody joining us from the West Coast? You're up nice and early. <laughs> so we are being live streamed this morning also for the viewers who are out there watching it on the Get Set Up television platform. And I will start my video and hi, <laughs> I am going to start sharing the screen um, and then you should be able to see the class title for today. Can people see that introduction to calligraphy is our morning class. All right, great. I'm going to put my gallery of faces over to my other monitor so that I can see everybody. And then we will get started as soon as it will go. There we go. So I always tell my groups, you will be most likely muted to begin with. If you need to unmute to ask me a question, that is fine. I don't mind that. Just if you do unmute and there's any kind of background noises, please remember to mute yourself again. I will have the chat box open and I try to keep an eye on that for any messages. If you wanna share information with the rest of the group, it's a good place to type in ideas for resources, shopping places, that kinds of things, or maybe something that you know about the topic that might be of interest to others. So with that being said, we're gonna get started. As I said, this is Introduction to Calligraphy. And my name is Christine Hess. I am here in South Central Pennsylvania near Harrisburg. And my background is in art education. And then I went on for more of a um, degree in training and development. And if you hear sirens going by right now, I don't know if you can hear it right now, but they're in my little town here and they're flying by the street. So it's not a good thing. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I worked for 38 years in healthcare. I did get to use my art in that setting with kids for 24 years on pediatrics. And that was a very rewarding job I had. Then I went into the patient education department. I've also dabbled in many, many different things just because I like to be involved in all kinds of you know, creative adventures. And one of them was in antiquing, but I also have a passion for anything environmental. As you'll see, a lot of my art subjects tend to be more with nature, um, but I've been involved with environmental education for many years too. And I love interacting with my Get Set Up groups that give me new experiences with what they share and I learn from them. And then I also love that I can share my passions with them. So if you would like to show your video of you and you're not sure how, you just have to scroll down to the bottom left corner and there is a little video camera there that says start video and then I can see you. I appreciate those who are, are sharing their screens with me that I can see you. Um, I even is that a Rita? Brenda, you're on the beach, it looks like, <laughs> with flowing water behind you. That looks nice, too. <laughs> so at Get Set Up, we learn from each other, and ideally, we can see each other. And also, that way, we share back and forth things with what we have to say. If you're joining by live stream, remember that the best way to participate is to actually register for a class and join us so that you can share things like this. And remember that Get Set Up is not paid to promote any specific products. As I said, this class is being recorded. If you would like a copy, you can email help at getsetup.io and ask for a copy of this class. 
So today what we're going to look at is how the history of calligraphy involves the past versus the current uses we see today. We'll also explore some inspiring examples and resources that I use. And then you'll observe how the process to create calligraphy is done with some of my examples that I share. So if you brought pen and paper along to try, because a lot of people in my classes like to come prepared to maybe just sit there and dabble with things and try it, uh, you really would probably best benefit from having a calligraphy pen. If you have just a regular pen, though, you'll still be able to practice some of the flow and maybe relate to the idea of putting the pen to the paper. But a calligraphy pen is specific to how it helps you get the different types of fonts and the different strokes. So what is calligraphy? Well, the actual definition is that calligraphy is a decorative handwriting or handwritten lettering. The art of producing decorative handwriting or lettering with a pen or brush. And the caveat to that is that you can now during the day of so many electronic resources, you can get downloadable fonts that look like calligraphy and you can use them in your electronic creation. So say you're doing a little card or a poster using your electronic program, you can just go right to those calligraphy fonts and use them. But today I'm going to tell you how much more um, creative and fun it is to actually use handwritten uh, letters on paper with a pen. So these pens up here, the tips of them are examples I just grabbed to show you what nibs are. So when I talk about pens with nibs, the nibs are the points and there are many different types of, of pens and we'll talk a little bit about that. So I just wanted you to see some of these. These are all more fine points in their tips. You can also get them that they're very broad and they make a little different type of effect when you do your strokes. So who remembers penmanship classes from way back when? Yes, I see. And, and it's, yes, and I, I love my penmanship classes. We had to be very precise about practicing those strokes and using that specific lined paper so that they were all the exact size. Um, and often you didn't get to do the letter until you did a large amount of practice strokes like circular strokes or up and down strokes. So in a similar way, calligraphy is an extension of penmanship. It's just a different type of writing. And also the other thing that's important to know is the more you practice, the better you get at it, which is kind of like what I remember from penmanship. So the history of calligraphy dates way back to ancient China, and those are the years there, 206 BCE to 220 CE. That was in China during the Han Dynasty. So, um, and the Shang Dynasty, it became more common. So it says it was very expected for all educated men and some women to be proficient at it. The rest of the Western scripts or styles evolved from Roman originals. So the samples I have here, the one on the lower left, is Chinese calligraphy. And often that was done with brushes. And the brushes were very simple bamboo handles with brushes that were made often of animal hair. And the strokes they used to create these characters, that's what they're called, would vary with the thickness they employed by pushing down on that brush. So some areas are very fine and little dots, and then you see some of these strokes are thicker, and that's all with how they controlled that brush. In the Roman and Western styles, we went more to the italic or very um, more formal looking lettering like down here, and they started to use pens, and often those pens were dipped in inks and they had quills that they used because the quills would absorb the, the ink into the channel of that quill and then it would flow when you put it on paper. So these are some examples of the Western styles. This page here is called an illustration. They often used calligraphy combined 
with some sort of little artwork. So someone's asking me where I would suggest to find calligraphy pens. We are gonna talk about where that can be because I have some examples for you that I pulled off Amazon, but there's also some other places that I find that might be um, kind of bargain places to find them. So here's a little bit more in the variety of styles that you'll see when you start to really look into calligraphy. So this traditional italic style is what I most often thought of and did when I got into it 30 years ago or more. Uh, that was what you mostly saw. We've come a long way with many other different types of, of lettering and styles that there are. And like I said, some of them are electronic, but I still like to use my pen with the paper. So let's talk about this terminology because it is good to know when you look at your different fonts and the font refers to lettering style. So this one on the left is called a serif font and the one on the right is a sans serif font. So all that means is without serifs. So the serifs are these little circled areas and a serif is a decorative stroke that finishes off the end of a letter stem also called feet of the letters. So in this illustration, you can see the left side has these little appendages that stick out, whereas the right side is just your very plain, bold text. So that's the obvious difference between a font that has serif, such as uh, if you're thinking electronic, uh, when you do your Word documents, you can choose a Times Roman or uh, things that have that more old fashioned typewriter text to them versus these more simple fonts that have none of those little serifs on them. So that's just a nice to know thing because when you do calligraphy, often you are adding more when it comes to the edges and ends of your letters instead of just basic ones, unless you're doing modern samples and we're going to look at some of them too. So here's some modern ones that I'm talking about. So often the modern ones remind me more of our uh, penmanship classes where we learned cursive writing. So these are really a type of script writing versus the more printed letters that have those either serif edges or not. And I also include whimsical, funky styles in the modern era because you have this type that looks, you know, like somebody just created their own thing. But of interest, you'll see the feet also have these little curly cues and embellishments on them. So that's almost like having some sort of serif on the edges, uh, but it has a whole different feel to it because of just the style. It's not that very um, formal kind of italic style. You often see these modern styles used in many things today. And here are some examples. It's a very common place. Wedding invitations, that has been the most popular place I see them using these more modern cursive styles. And this is a wedding invitation there. Also in cards, greeting cards, I've seen some menus that have some calligraphy styles on them. Some are more traditional and italic style, depending on the uh, type of restaurant you're in. And then signs and posters. And perhaps you've heard of the classes where you go and sit around a table and make your own sign. It used to be you could just do that with paintings. Everybody sat around and did their own painting of the same theme. Well, now you can do signs and they usually give you a saying and some styles to copy, and then you paint your own sign to take home and hang on your wall. And also clothing, that's some place that I have seen them used in different ways on fabrics. So those are places I thought of, and maybe you can think of other places that you would see these uh, things that have to do with fancier writing, calligraphy styles. So here's a few other examples. The one in the middle is what I was just talking about, the signs. This, this is an example of, you know, where you go and sit around a table and they give you a piece of wood and paint, and then they give you things to look at to paint your own sign with your own saying. And this has that cursive, more modern type of writing here that's done. 
This one on the right is that same modern uh, script writing. It's on a t-shirt. And if you use a calligraphy pen, you do get these wider and thinner examples of strokes that we'll see when I show you some examples. This one here is a person I follow on Instagram. His name is Jose Naranja. He makes his own little journals and then he does this amazing writing in it. Often it's in Spanish. Uh, so I'm not sure what he's writing about except by looking at his pictures and his little diagrams he uses or adds to it. Sometimes he does have some of it in English, but his writing is done in a very, uh, you know, scripted kind of way where he does a little more fancy writing with pens and he's often using his calligraphy pens. So this is his website. Uh, and here's a close up example. Here you can see his pen and you can see how he sometimes does bold, more basic lettering. And then he does some writing in here. So you could maybe decide that you want to add this to a journal that you do. I've done that with mine, or you could make cards with it. Uh, there's many places you can use the writing once you start to practice it and, and have fun doing it. Questions so far? And you might hear more sirens again because they're going off again. <laughs> can, can you post the website for that person? Yes. I will send Please. you at the end of this class, I will send you uh, an email and it'll have the links in it for what we look at and share. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so this is my own personal example of how I've been doing lettering and signs for many years. And then when people know that they, they sometimes may ask you to do something. In this case, I did volunteer. It was for my son and my daughter-in-law's wedding. And this was a couple years ago. You can see this is a part of their invitation that I cut out to use in this poster. And it has that very modern script style in it. So what I did was make the title for the seating um, table of, of their, this poster in that similar scripted font. And then for each individual table, I did printing with my calligraphy pen in more of just a basic plain um, style. I didn't do the, the script. I wanted it more easily read. So that was a large, very large poster that was then put on an easel that they could find where they needed to sit and go sit. So here is some breakdown for more terminology that we look at when we talk about the parts of a letter. Because often when you get either tutorials or you get books that are trying to teach you how to do calligraphy, they'll talk about some of these parts of a letter. So you recognize probably this dotted line type book. It's similar to what we had in penmanship, you know, where you had to make sure your sizes of your letters stayed the same. And it was used for uppercase, capital, knowing where that would go versus lowercase, the small letters and how they would be formed. So you have a baseline here. A descender is that which goes beyond the, late, the baseline. This is the capital height, they call it cap height. And then stems, stems are often the downstroke. Sometimes you're going up with them, but the stem is the main bulk of what supports the par other parts of the letter. So in this style here, you can see that's more of an italic Roman old fashioned style and it has serifs on it. This one over here, I say to show you because often in calligraphy books, you will get the ones that tell you the stroke direction to go in. So this one is telling you, you go up for this A and then you come down and then you cross it. And when you use a thicker nib, your pen touching the paper automatically creates thin and thicker lines. You don't have to change the way you're holding it. It just does that. You hold it like a regular pen. So people ask me that. And because you have this thick part with the ink coming through, it makes a broader, fatter area. And I have a really good video that's going to show this close up. Questions before we go on to supplies. 
So this is a picture of my own stash. And I, like I said, I've been doing this many years. So I have some things that I found at yard sales I went to. I go to auctions sometimes and would find things. So some of mine are older um, and you can't find like, like this Parker set anymore. I also found shaper sets that have nibs in them with cartridges. But I saw a very similar set like this at Aldi's one time. It was probably closer to Christmas. So you know how Aldi's has that aisle of other sales stuff that it changes every week. Well, it, you might hit it that you see a calligraphy set because it had a pen, it had three nibs in and it had some cartridges and a book. So that's what I mean about unusual places to find it. Also, I have found them at Tuesday morning. I've seen them there. Um, we have another place that's called Ollie's. And if you're on the East Coast, maybe you heard of it. If you're on the other areas, parts of the country, you might have something, something similar. And the way I describe it is it's called a bargain outlet and he gets bankrupt items or um, things that fall off a truck, those kinds of things. So his aisle full of stationery and arts and crafts is always changing, but it's, it's got a lot of stuff in it. And I have seen calligraphy sets there too. So those are just like places to think about that are maybe not as common and often bargain prices. So here is also some other pens that I just stood up so you could see they vary in what they're made of. These are plastic. This is one of the screw-in nibs, just like these screw into this pen. And then this is ink that I could actually use in a pen that has a refillable resource in it. This Parker pen has a squeezable ink cartridge in here that I could just pull the ink into it. And this set, even though it comes with pre-filled cartridges, this last one on the end is a refillable one. And a lot of pens that you look at do have that now. Um, and I like it because you can just put a little bit of ink in it so it doesn't dry out if you leave it sitting there. These, if you pop them into the uh, ink and it, it makes a hole in the end. And if you don't use it and let it sit there for a couple months, it's probably going to dry up. So unless you're really going to use it quickly, it's not as economical to use these types of cartridges, but they're also easier to find. So those are standard pens and nibs. And the ink I got, I found on Amazon. It's just Parker Quink. It's called Quink Ink. They make many other brands. There's a lot of Asian brands out there because they do more often um, lettering and characters with pen and ink. Uh, and paper, you can find paper that's lined for practice, or you can just use a journal, a common journal you find in one of the stores that has lines in it. Sometimes the paper, uh, a little bit of thickness is better so that the ink doesn't bleed through because those very cheaper notebooks that kids use for school, those papers are very, very thin and meant for ballpoint ink. So if you're gonna look for something that you wanna use this type of ink with, you want it to be a little more substantial. And they make computer paper that's a little thicker than, than the cheapest kind. That works well too. And I put an iPad down because I do have an app on mine that I use just to have fun with and play with. I still prefer doing real ink on real paper, but it's fun in case you just wanna practice. And I'm gonna show you that. In fact, the videos I made for this were used, um, were done on my I iPad, I used it, so you'll get to see them. And then I put this picture here. These are a more common thing that you can find now in a lot of the craft sections. They're called brush pens. Now these are dual because one end is a fine point and one end is a brush pen. So this brush pen mimics the old fashioned Chinese type of using a brush for doing characters. So it doesn't give you the same strength and control as a metal nib does. What you have to do with a brush is practice so that you change pressure, how much you're pushing down on that point on the brush part of it. So if you only have light pressure, it's the very tip of it and you get a thin line. And if you push harder down as you do a downstroke, you get it making a wider stroke. So brush pens are cheaper and easier to try and play with and have fun with. 
but also they're a whole different way that, of making letters than these uh, other calligraphy fountain pens are. Questions about supplies, because we're gonna look at where you can find them online next. In case you're into ordering online, I looked up on Amazon. So here's another picture of my collection of things. Um, and this is a calligraphy book I have that really is just lines in paper. It's made by Eaton. So, you know, it's a little higher quality pad. It's called a practice pad. You can sometimes find them in places like Tuesday morning also. Um, so they have things or for sure in your craft stores like Michael's Hobby Lobby, those places that have the arts and crafts areas you can find these kinds of things in. But I wanted to see what's online now as far as sets go, because sets, you know, are more expensive. When I found mine, I could get them, you know, inexpensively because of finding them at yard sales or auctions. And as I said, the set I saw at all these was only $9.99. So it wasn't probably the highest quality, but it was good. I got it from my neighbor who's been practicing and using it and likes it. And it came with, um, the things you need to get started. So here's one I found that's called Arteco calligraphy pen set. And it has all these cartridges in, it comes with two pens and it looks like five different nibs and here's a refillable cartridge. So it's 25 pieces. And I think it also has a, a pad of paper in there and probably some basic directions. 20, Three dollars, you know, it's that's not that expensive. It looks like a good amount of things you get for that. So I didn't think that was bad. And then here is the current Schaefer uh, version as compared to mine. These two over here, the blue and the black are old fashioned Schaefer pens that came in sets with cartridges and nibs. So they've modernized the style of it but you still get three different size nibs. So from fine point, medium, and then this is called broad. And you get some of these cartridges in different colors, which is what I remember getting my sets with. So that's $14.99. That's not that bad either. You can probably, you know, hunt around and find them for less, but that's a good starter one too. I, I do like my Schaefer ones, they work well. Um, so that's, those are some resources that I found on Amazon. And now this is what I call an online stationery store. I found this a few years ago and I really like it because of the variety. You will see on this page with calligraphy fountain pens, they vary from very expensive. I mean, there's some that are probably Mont Blancs that are over a hundred dollars um, to some that are less expensive. So I thought this was a good thing for you to look at as a resource if you like to order things online. The other reason I like jet pens is because when you go into their categories, such as pens, you see there's many, many, many categories and supplies. So not only can you get the pens, then they have the refills and the inks. They have cases and bags. They have different kinds of paper. Um, and some of these do come from Asian resources, which I said, they, they tend to have more, um, a, a bigger amount of things to look at and choose from because they use them more often in their country than we do here. And then they just have a lot of other, like you could look up pens and to find sets of pens if you wanna look at scents. But they do have brush pens in here too, like I showed you that picture of. So jet pens is just one of the online office supply places I found. Sometimes I have gone into um, Staples and they had some in there too that I found on sale. So even your office supply places may have some calligraphy pens and basic supplies in there for you to look at. I found a Parker one on sale. I think it's this metal one here. It was really inexpensive on sale. And I like using that for just everyday writing. I, I use it if I'm writing letters or writing cards because I, I still do write some letters to friends. And I, I just like using my basic Parker pen. Any questions about supplies? That should give you a good place to get started with looking at them. All right. And like I said, yard sales with yard sales coming up and those kinds of things. Often people have some old stationary supplies in a box. You might see them, though they're harder to find because not as many people have them around now that are younger. The younger people 
didn't get the benefit of having penmanship classes. You know, they don't they don't know what handwriting and script writing is because they don't give them in classes anymore. Some private schools do, and a lot of people who homeschool still like to do it. I found here in my public school district, some teachers, just a few, do it as a as a thing for kids to learn, but it's not required because they feel keyboarding is more important to know. So unfortunately, our kids are learning typing, um, but they're not really learning a whole lot of, of handwriting. And it's interesting because I've, I've heard people tell you with studies they've done that handwriting and the act of putting that pen on paper and creating the words is a different connection in your brain and how you remember things than if you only type. And I truly, I believe that's true too. I mean, I've, I found that always to be true when I took notes in school, writing it gave me a better way to remember it than if I just sat there and listened. And I can't imagine typing and taking notes. I, I don't know that I get that really well. So those are just some other thoughts about writing versus typing. So here's some demonstrations I put together. Uh, this picture on the right is a sample of what they call like a uh, practice tutorial printout. And some places you can buy these like on Etsy. Some blogs, and we're going to look at some blogs, some blogs actually give you free resources to print off and use. You might have to give them your email, and that's just so that you're kind of giving them support on their blog. They want to send you updates or whatever. You can opt out of that usually in their privacy settings for what email you get. But the point is there are some blogs where you can get free things like this. So the reason I like these for be beginners, so this is called the chancery italic hand. That's the style. You can see, probably it's not very clear, but I'll tell you, these blue lines tell you the direction to go in and they're numbered. So the A is a one and you go around, up and down. And the B is a one, you come down, and then the two, you go around and come down. So it actually gives you the stroke direction and the sequencing. And that really helps when you're first starting and using your pen and you want to try to make letters that have some sort of uh, consistent style to them. So I thought that was a good example. And I found that by just going to uh, Google. So if you type in calligraphy, tutorial letters comes up and you're looking at images. You could also look at videos if you want to, but if you go to images, what's nice is you get, if this will open up, it's a little slow. Um, you get a page that, that gets bigger like this, that's all different printouts and samples and examples. And that's a nice way to kind of use your eyes to look at it but then try to copy it on paper with your pen. So when I'm making signs or making cards, I often do this just so I can get a different um, style to try. So here's one of those that I told you shows directions. And just by looking at this and then doing it on your paper with your pen, it gives you a way to practice it. So you can Google calligraphy tutorials letters, or you could do calligraphy modern scripts, and you might get something more like that. You could do calligraphy italic style and it'll give you them. Just look at the images instead of the part that gives you all the articles. So that's for how you can find some of these. So let's look at the one I did um, on my iPad and it's using a calligraphy pen. So you'll see it gives you the very broad strokes when you come down and the thinner ones when you go up. So depending on how your, your pen is hitting that paper, you see how some of these areas are thinner versus the broader downstrokes. And in this one, I'm just doing very quick, kind of uh, simple italic style. I didn't add any fancy serif little uh, decorations on the, on the ends of them. And once you practice and do things like this, the flow starts to become much more um, easy for you to remember to do. So that was just some uppercase ones. And now I'll show you the lowercase ones 
that are in a similar style, but they're um, just the small letters, lowercase. Again, this was done so you can see the difference of the thin area versus the thick. And the wider your nib is, the more broad that thick area is gonna be. If I was using a thinner nib, you wouldn't see quite drastic of difference between the areas on those letters. So sometimes you really want those broad nibs to give you that feeling. Questions about any of that? And like I said, this is an app. If you have an iPad, I'll share the app with you because it's fun to try and practice and use. It's called Sketches. You can find it in the Apple Store or it is also uh, made for um, Android devices. So it's made by Taya Sui. It's free. I've had it many years. I have an old iPad mini, nothing fancy. I don't have the iPad Pro and I use a basic stylus. So the nice thing about this app is one of the pens you get is a calligraphy pen right here. And it automatically makes broad strokes if you choose the broad tip. You can choose a thinner one. So it's fun to play with and practice with and you're not wasting so much paper because you can like erase it and start over, erase it and start over. Um, but you can upgrade and get a few more fancy tools. I chose to do that because I use this one almost all the time for just having fun and playing with art on my iPad. I still prefer, as I said many times, my paper and my pen or my paper and my watercolors or whatever I'm doing. I like the real things to use, but the iPad thing I use here is just another way to practice some things. Yes, you can print your work from your app if you have it hooked up like to a blue tooth printer or something, they do give you that option. Often I just save them, you know, and they're in, they give you like these different books you're saving and they're accumulated in there like little sketchbooks. So that's the app in case anyone's interested. I don't get any money from it. I just give it as my resource because it's the one I use and it's basic and it's more simple and you don't need the high-end iPad Pro or Apple Pen or anything like that. And it has a lot of options to play with. So here are the more modern cursive scripts that I talk about that I often see in invitations, wedding invitations. My, my cousin is a graphic artist. She's um, a lot younger than me and she went to school for graphic art and she does all her designing on her computer for invitations that she then sends to the printer to be printed. So everything she uses is electronic, but her, many of her um, invitations have this more modern style to it. I like to look at something like this, like I said, and then use that to try to practice pen on paper. It's just a good resource to try to mimic and make my own things with. And then if you wanna do your own greeting cards or whatever, you can have fun playing with that. So here's a couple more demonstrations I put together using that same app on my iPad with um, a simple kind of scripted style. Again, See how there's thin areas and broad areas because of how the pen is putting the ink down on the paper, how it hits. And with this type of style, they all connect. So you really do have to flow. And again, the more you practice, the more you're gonna find that that becomes easier to do. And this one is a YouTube video of someone who did uh, the modern style. Now hers is much more practiced and you can tell she does it a lot. Um, her pen is a, is a very basic pen. It's a wooden handle with a little metal nib on it and she's dipping it in ink. And she does press down because those are flexible nibs. The more you press down on them, the more ink comes out of it and it creates a broad, a broad area. area. 
So when she doesn't press on it, it just gives you that very, very fine area there. And when she presses down on it, it gets a fatter stroke. But you can see, unless she has lines there that we can't see, she's done this a lot and it's very, you know, very controlled. You can even see how her ink is there. It's kind of like in little puddles. But that gives you a good sense of a pen that is thinner and yet has some give to it. Some of them don't have that give to it to make it broad. And that's how it dries. So it, there's some color in there. So I thought that was a good example for a modern one to see how it was being done. And these are a couple other, you know, they have a little different feel to them. They're still kind of script writing, but there's just a different style. Or you can create your own. And I just did these off the top of my head with some lettering I did um, to practice with coming up with something totally different. Though these days, there's so many electronic versions of text and fonts that you'll find hundreds of styles. So you may think you're making one fairly new, but it's probably out there somewhere that it looks something like that. So this just goes to tell you the more you practice, the better you get at it. There's ways to practice. So this here is the paper with lines, and then you have the division with dotted lines and how they're using a brush pen to do these letters. And it is very similar to penmanship classes where you had to practice letter after letter after letter. This over here is a print out by the inky hand. And I think that was one that you can get through Etsy. It was probably one I found as a sample on Google. I didn't get it, but I wanted you to see some of them walk you through the parts, just like we learned in penmanship class, of what you then put together. So it's upstroke, downstroke, and you end up having an A like this. And then it gives you grayed out letters to trace over and practice. So it's just that repetitive practice is helping you become better at it. So here are some blog resources. Again, these will all be sent to you after class as links that you can then go to and check out and see. I picked three different ones because I tried to find ones that hit the different topics. So this one is all about um, a lettering style and things that she offers courses. Amanda Arneal is her name. And um, she also does have some, so she talks about pens, and here's a brush pen. She gives you a little bit of lowdown on that versus a, a calligraphy fountain pen. She talks about strokes and beginner tips, and she does have some free patterns and printables available. So I thought that was a good resource for you to look at. Another one is, well, you can find printouts on a lot of these blogs. Um, what I like about like this one here, I said some of them are free, but they want your email. So here you can see this one is just strokes working up to practicing to be able to do letters. The other reason I saved this for is this is a different kind of pen. It's called an oblique pen. The other ones are called straight pens. So some people learn doing this and they do mimic um, some very old fashioned types of pens that were out there. And I've heard that some people like them because it kind of puts the ink out of your way and doesn't, you know, get it as far as smearing goes and all that. I haven't ever had trouble with smearing with using a straight pen. I have never really, I think I tried one of these one time. And if you're already set in your ways, it's so different. It's very hard for me to get used to. It's kind of a disconnect because of how it's at an angle. But if you try it, you might like it. They do say some people prefer them to others. So I saved that blog just because she also has some printouts for styles and worksheets. So you'll get that link. This is an example of a resume I did back in the 80s because I applied for a job that had to do with art. And I thought it was nice to show you a real life example of how I used it in a different way. 
I don't know we could get a well we wouldn't need to do that today because you know you have the electronic version you could just do this on a word document pick a style and make your own but I did this all by hand and then made copies and it worked to my advantage because it was an art job where I worked with kids and um they liked it so sometimes you know it it's like I said you could find really unusual uses for it and at the time I thought that was a taking a chance and it worked out to my advantage so here's some other blogs so this one what I often have done say I'm doing which um the most recent thing I'm working on is a sign to hang on my camp so I'm looking at different types of lettering and when you find a place like this a thousand and one fonts these are meant mainly the reason they exist is like my cousin who creates her own products. You can download these fonts and you have the whole thing to use. Now, most often they do cost money. Sometimes they're free if you if it says so and you can use it that you're not selling them. But what I like about it is say I decide I want to do this beyond Wonderland font. If I click on that, and remember, I'm not really out to download this and use it. I'm just here to use it as a reference to see what this style looks like. And what it does is give me the whole alphabet, uppercase, lowercase, that I can practice and use this style if I want to make a sign or an invitation with it or whatever. So it's a really good way to be, see a resource that you can then use for a visual practice of something. So here's one, one of those that's the very um, modern style that I said you often see in wedding invitations. And again, all of these, you find the alphabet is there to look at. And I, I like that I used to have, <laughs> back in the 70s when I went to college, I had a book that was called Typography. And it was just filled with all different styles because there was no electronic version back then. Back then it was all handwritten and handmade or else with some sort of uh, printing equipment that you have in the old fashioned printing days. But I would use my book to then try to do it with pen on paper. Now you can just look at something like this on your computer, on your iPad and find it to try to then do those same styles with. And I just, I think that's fun and interesting. Sometimes I just do it for the fun of it. This blog is a lot more with um, background of calligraphy and what are lettering styles and pens that are used. So there's a brush pen and there's the oblique pen. And then there are sometimes uh, freebies that you can print out. And she talks about how she uses them, whether it's in business cards, that kind of thing. So that's an example of another blog that I'll send a link for. And this one is also a modern calligraphy one that she talks about how she does her lettering styles. Here's an example with the directional kind of tutorial. She has one on watercolor calligraphy if you wanted to try that. So that is another one I will send you. And then these are apps I found. So there are quite a few calligraphy apps if you're curious for your iPad. Um, I picked out only two because they were rated high, they were free, and they looked like they gave you some background information for styles and practice. They do offer in-app purchases, so I don't know what they charge you for, but I'm thinking if it's free, they give you a little bit to play around with. So I thought that that one was one. And I'll send you the links to them also. And then this one's called calligraphy penmanship. I like that they use the word penmanship in it. Again, rated high, free, in-app purchases. So I do look at if people are happy with it and like it. And it looks like, you know, you get some practice things to use with that one in case you want them for your iPad. Any questions about any of that? I'll give you a chance to unmute if anybody has any questions. Yes, Michelle, I see. Oh, I uh, was wondering if you're going to take us to the next level of actually maybe doing calligraphy with you over a Zoom meeting. Well, I, I have thought about that. I had people who asked me that. Presently, what I am working on is kind of a get together with the groups 
the people who have taken my classes so that they can have kind of a discussion with, I tried this, I have a question. Here's, here's what I did, let's share it and look at it. You know, so a step further to just kind of have a roundup about questions and, you know, things that would help you go further. So it's being talked about um, and people want like a, a higher level of each course I'm offering. And, and I'm looking at that for now. So, but if you practice it and try it, look for the one where I'm going to have like an art share, get together social hour where we can then, this is what I did. Here's my questions that I could help you with something. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And remember YouTube right now, I found a lot of good um, things on YouTube that show you how to do it and, and how to practice it. Did anybody else have a question? Okay. So in summary, remember that calligraphy is the art of producing decorative handwriting or lettering with a pen or brush. There are a variety of styles to use in calligraphy lettering. Decorative lettering is used in many places, signs, invitations, greeting cards, menus, and t-shirts, and the tutorials that you'll find online, such as on YouTube or on people's blogs, are very, very helpful. So I do have something I want to show you here because I just found this yesterday, so I'm going to do a spotlight on me. Can you see this? It's called calligraphy, Cray crayolligraphy with crayol. So these Crayola markers are made with a broad tip. I don't know if you've seen them or not. Very broad tip. And if you hold them and use the broad tip, you almost get a calligraphy feel out of it. So this book was in the dollar store for a dollar and I found it interesting. It does have practice pages in it. Um, so you can find things like this in places you wouldn't even expect that talk about practicing your strokes and how to make your letters. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Questions. And I just saw, I forgot to hit the record. So I apologize. I don't think there's going to be a full recording available. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll ask them and see if they can make uh, one of my previous ones. I'll give them a heads up because I just did this class last week. So even though it won't be this, you know, this group, it'll still be the same content. So I'll ask them if they can make that available for you because I want you to be able to review some of those things if you want. But also remember, you will get an email. It'll have all those links in. It'll have the main points I went over. Um, if you'd like to share any of your experience, you can hashtag your social media or send it to Liz at getsetup.io. She writes a blog and sometimes she even um, highlights people and what they're making. Any kind of help you would need, please just write to help at getsetup.io and they will send you information or help try to help you with problems. Related classes coming up are creating cards and invitations with Canva or introduction to art journaling. And then my next classes are basic drawing nature inspired and the art of collage and porn paper. This is an example of the email you'll get. It'll have the notes in it. It'll suggest some other classes and you'll have a link to give feedback. If you click on that link, you get this form to fill out to tell me what you thought about the session. And we do read them and look at them and I really like to see comments. So you can make it from one star to five stars. The default is four. If you wanna make it five, you have to click on that extra five stars. And then you can also offer any ideas for more classes, such as Michelle was saying, level two classes. And we can look at that and consider that. So here's the recording session email in case you didn't write it down. Remember we're growing every week and partnering with more and more community groups. Uh, if you would like to maybe host an interest group, you can let them know at that email because they do use some of our learners to do that. And is there anybody who needs help with anything on the new website? Because this has been running for three weeks. Now we have a TV option there. We have schedules. What I like to show people is if you click on the search and you type in whatever your topic is, I put in drawing, you get a list of classes to look for. 
So say you're looking for my basic drawing class, that's there. And then it tells you when it's offered that you can register right from there. You can also go to about the guide, which is me, and go to other classes I teach. And on the bottom, you'll see a lot of the other classes and when they're held. So learners were asking for that feature and they added it to our new website so that they would say, what other classes do you teach? When are they offered? Right now is an easy way to find it on our new website. So this is another reason to join our website and be a member. You can easily find things like that. Any questions I, about anything else? I have a question. Yes, I, you're right ahead, Diane. Where do you find your cartridges for your Schaefer pens? I found a calligraphy set at a yard sale, and there are 14 empty cartridges, and it was never used. It's just you know, by age. Yes, they, they, they dried up. Yeah, and there's so many pretty colors. So I did find them. That Jet Pen website is where I got a lot. The link to the Jet Pens website I'll send you. That's where I okay. got some of them. They have them on Amazon. If you're looking for them in person, I would suggest like a stationery store or Staples or, you know, if you have an office supply place. Those, but those are where you'll sometimes find the cartridges. But I ended up ordering mine online from Jet Pens. Okay. I went to Staples and I had to buy a new pen with their cartridges because they didn't have it. And I wanted to have something for class. But yeah. I, I really want to replace all of these cartridges because they're so many pretty colors. Well, Peacock yeah. And, and the thing is, so that Jet Pens stationery store, and there's there's a couple others that have a variety, but Jet Pens is one I've used and like. They okay. have a huge amount of colors and you really have to get the specific cartridge to your pen. So some of them are small, some of them are longer, but then they yes. also sell those refillable cartridges that you can probably use in your pen, like I said, and then only use a certain amount of ink in it. Well, I understand when you say you can find them for little or nothing and this was a steal. Yeah. Nobody yes. wants to use them anymore, so. Yes. And it had never been used. <laughs> yep, that's how I found mine, too. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, Diane. Anybody else have a last question? All right. Well, I'm glad to see Sandy said the new site's wonderful. That's great. I'm glad you're finding it useful and that it's, some people at first were like, oh my gosh, this is different. I'm having trouble with it. But there is classes that, Marv app offers on how to use the new website too. Or if you're a new person to get set up, you can see all the features we have. So thank you very much for coming and spending your hour with me. Have a great weekend and you can go off and practice your penmanship now. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome.